all Gigafactory progress before and after the first four months. Welcome to my Tesla Weekend Gigafactory progress for all sites, Giga Shanghai, Giga Berlin, and Giga Texas. Everyone hates clickbait, so let's just get into it and I'll share my thoughts along the way. A lot of questions I see about Giga Texas, where the Cybertruck will be built, involve the speed of construction, especially compared to Giga Shanghai and Giga Berlin. So let's take a look at all three of the factories, side by side, month by month, for comparison. Month Zero. Shanghai had the easiest building site. A former melon farm, it was already flat and essentially clear and required only the use of deep piers to create a solid foundation. And while all of these zero-month videos show work already underway, that's because nobody had the foresight to survey the properties before construction began. In Shanghai, we can see there's still a fair amount of site remediation necessary, mostly limited to grading and the removal of rubbish and debris. Berlin was also flat, but had environmental hurdles in terms of hibernating bats and migratory nesting birds, which allowed for a very narrow window in which to clear the existing tree farm. There were also a number of unexploded ordnance that had been dropped in World War II, which needed to be located and, you know, safely disposed of. Crazy to think about that, right? Once permitted to remove the trees, the land was cleared at an astonishing pace. Texas was by far the most challenging site to prepare. A former sand and gravel mine, the land was scarred with tons of trenches that needed to be carefully filled in order to create stable soil upon which to build. In addition, there were a lot of natural hills that had to be leveled. This was made a bit easier because of the quality of the material, which allowed them to simply move higher ground into the dips rather than relying entirely on imported fill material from off-site though there was a non-stop convoy of trucks still required to do exactly that. Which is pretty crazy to think about it. Some companies spent years pulling all this sand and gravel out only for Tesla to come in, buy the property, and have to put it all back. Month 1 Shanghai had very little appearance of progress after its first month, due in large part to the wetness of their winters, which kept heavy equipment from working at full speed. The amount of mud visible paints a fairly complete picture. Drainage ditches were put in place to better dry the ground for continued work, and it was at this point the Tesla Bears were just so convinced this whole thing was a boondoggle. And yet a lot of them look at the Nikola site, which I can only describe as the world's largest industrial zen garden, as some sign of progress. Their stock is doing great, which makes absolutely no sense. Berlin's tree clearance was essentially complete, and the grading and ground prep had begun, with a number of areas already set for work to commence. There was still a lot of timber and topsoil to be removed, temporary roads were added to allow for vehicles to get started, and things were going great, well underway. Texas continued filling in low-lying areas, pumping the water out to be reused on-site to better compact the endless layers of fill. Despite being far complete with leveling, the site's footprint was already taking shape. By the end of the first month, all sites were getting their temporary construction offices in place, and despite Shanghai's reputation for speed, it doesn't appear to have any advantage at this point. As a reminder, the point of my Tesla weekend is to provide my information-hungry friends with content when the other guys take the day off. Since we're entering a four-day weekend, I plan to release four videos by Sunday. So if you appreciate it, leave a comment and let me know.
month two. Well, Shanghai had begun sinking hundreds of piers upon which to build the foundations, but the foundation work in Texas had begun as well. The Berlin site was finally cleared with the removal of the final bat hibernation tree. The site was 95% graded and prepped for construction work to begin. Texas continued the process of filling ponds and installing geopiers, which were used to place footings on. Instead of using traditional driven pilings, they had to do something different. This is a better solution, the geopiers, when the ground is softer, as in the case of reclaimed land, which basically the entire Giga Texas site is. Month three, pile drivings continued at Giga Shanghai with little else in terms of visible progress. This feels deceptively slow since 100% of the work underway was being jammed underground. So you couldn't possibly see how many footers were build ready, though that would become obvious as soon as vertical column work began in like a minute or so later in the video. I don't know, very soon, very soon. You'll see it, you'll see it, it's in month four. Texas took the lead in their third month, despite a slow start. Substantial footer and foundation work had already been completed, and first vertical test structures had been erected. big shout out to my 232 subscribers. This is a pace I'm pretty happy with. I've only been doing this for like a month. So thanks to all of you for being part of my Tesla weekend. If you dig what I do, check out some of my other videos and playlists and share this with people you think should see it. I hate to beg, but I'm still a long way from being able to monetize. So for now, at least I'm doing this just for the love. I do have a Patreon you can check out, but I haven't come up with any rewards yet, so don't feel bad if you don't have a buck or five to spare.
Month four is where it starts to get really exciting. Giga Shanghai shows huge progress on concrete foundation work, as well as the first signs of vertical construction. Tons of vertical columns going up, plus a number of completed roof segments, as well as additional groundwork on other parts of the site. Berlin had begun placing their first foundations, which were delayed due to environmental concerns. They weren't able to use the much simpler pilings due to potential interference with the water table, so they had to use floating raft footers, which add time and complexity, but the building footprint was already taking shape. And while it may not look like it at first glance, Texas, at this point, had truly taken the lead. Substantial foundation work had begun, or was being completed, and in vastly more complex ways than in Shanghai. Much bigger, deeper, heavier-duty foundations have been employed, and although the number of columns erected is lower, and total somewhat enclosed space appears lower, there are two massive reasons why this progress is evidence of Giga Texas being in the lead by a lot. The first reason is that the footprint of Giga Texas is more than double that of Giga Shanghai's first phase, which is what you see under construction here. This is also true of Berlin. They're just bigger factories. Phase two in Shanghai wouldn't begin for another eight months. The second reason is that the height of Giga Shanghai and also Giga Berlin is about double that of Shanghai. Most of phase one of Giga Shanghai is a single floor with a ceiling of about 20 feet. Berlin and Texas are each twice the footprint, twice the height, and at least twice the finished square footage of Shanghai. So if you like this video, give it a like, and if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments. What did I miss? What did I leave out? What did I include that was right? I don't know. Just, you know, just miss you guys. Just miss you. Happy Turkey Day, one and all. And I'll talk to you guys soon. I'm going to be here all weekend, so have fun and see you around.